enough is enough and I I have to draw the line somewhere. Like where and when do I stop? So it's quarter to 10 on Sunday, the 22nd of October. And I decided in the last half an hour that I'm gonna start doing weekly vlogs. I feel like I spend a lot of my time, sorry, I'm just making pasta. I spend a lot of my time telling people to just get going, to just do that thing that you always wanted to do. And not that I've always wanted to do YouTube, but because I do do a lot on TikTok and I've got a podcast, I've got more things I want to say than I have channels to say them on. So, given YouTube has a little bit more time, it's more long form, I thought let's just try and do a weekly vlog and see how it goes. Uh, so, if you're watching this, that makes one of you. I'm not really sure if I'm going to get two. Uh, but thank you anyway. As I said, it's Sunday night now, so I'm going to start tomorrow. And let's just see... Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna talk about, I guess, what I get up to with my, you know, day job, my uh, non-existent fitness journey that I've been on since 1991, what it takes out of me uh, to, to run a podcast, my photography side hustle, what I get up to in the week and all the sorts of things that pull me in different directions. So if you've got any suggestions, if you wanna hear anything in particular, a lot of people want LGBT content, so there's probably going to be a bit of that as well. So thanks in advance for joining me, and look forward to sharing more content with you when the time comes. We've already had a bad start to the week. I was meant to do a gym class at 7am this morning, and failed. Uh, overslept. I knew I was going to oversleep because I went to bed so late last night so typically i will try to go to bed about 9 30 9 30 10 o'clock in the evening with the view of trying to get up for about six set my alarm for six normally give myself sort of 20 minutes and then i'll like go to the gym or do some editing get something done i just try and be productive in the first sort of hour i don't obviously i i don't stick to it a lot of the time but today's particularly bad because it's now gone eight o'clock. Obviously I start work at nine o'clock, so I just wanna make sure that I've got time to do my coffee run, which I do every single morning. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna do a bit of a power walk because like I said, I'm running very late. I'm back from the gym. Well, it's not actually a gym, it's like a little fitness studio that I've been going to for a number of years. It was a pretty tough session, I have to admit, but I'm on a bit of a health kick at the moment because I have just put on so much weight and I've got to do something about it, basically. But over the last few days, well, few weeks really, I've been thinking about my podcast and whether or not I can continue doing it. The podcast has been like such a big part of my life for the last couple of years. I started it in lockdown, it was a lockdown project and I loved it and I still do love it. I mean, there is nothing better than if you're, if you're in the business of creating content and then you make something that you're really proud of and you pull it out and tens of thousands of people listen to it and you get engagement and people say how much they learn or how much they valued the content and for me, it's that feedback loop that allowed me to keep on doing it because as I've said before, I don't make any money. It's not monetized. In fact, it's a cost. If you factor in all the equipment that I've had to pay for over the last couple of years, even though I, do, I have a very, very lean production process, it's literally a camera, a microphone, and then all the software um, that goes with it. But that, that does add up. You know, it's a couple of hundred quid a month, really, if you think about it is it's not cheap and to get no returns it's kind of a question of 
is there a good enough return on investment for me to keep doing it? And I guess there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are plenty of reasons for me to keep carrying on, which is personal growth, self-development, creating a community, growing a platform that I think is positive and that can cut through the noise of all the kind of crap that we see on social media generally. And it's allowed me to build a TikTok account. Obviously, I'm by no means uh, going viral every time, but you know, I've got over 10,000 followers now on TikTok, predominantly all built off the back of tick of um, podcast content. And I genuinely, genuinely have a real passion and love for it. I have a passion for the podcast industry. I speak to many people who are in the business of making podcasts and I'm constantly giving them advice um, and ideas of how to get started. And for me, I absolutely love, I love that element of it. And of course, like I've learned so much. I've learned about addiction. I've learned about mental health. I've learned about LGBT issues. I've learned about entrepreneurship and how people have started their business. And people have overcome like some incredible, like life-changing adversities. And I've had the privilege of speaking to those people and understanding their story. But enough is enough and I, I have to draw the line somewhere. Like where and when do I stop? There are several things that I find really difficult to overcome. And I think this should all be looked at in the context of the fact that I have a full-time job. Like every day of the week, well, Monday to Friday, nine to five, I have you know a relatively senior position um, and I'm busy. Like my diary is full. I don't have time to be editing in the middle of the day or you speaking to podcast guests and, and that sort of thing. So the whole podcast project is done in my spare time, after work, before work and at weekends. All the podcast recordings are pretty much recorded on weekends. I spend the whole weekend editing and it's taken up days, if not weeks, if not months of my life. Um, and one of the biggest challenges that I'm having at the moment, having hit, I think I'm on like 60 episodes, maybe just over, is that booking podcast guests is a really cumbersome and really tiring thing. And if I look at my podcast strategy, not that there was one, but you always want to try and evolve. You want to grow. You want to make it bigger and better and more exciting. And I'm not willing to invest in production uh, because that does take it into like the thousands of pounds an episode type place. Not that might be over dramatic, but if I wanted to book a studio, for example, and do it, do a live recording, that's a couple of hundred quid um, just just for one episode. And of course, like I said, it's not monetized, it's not sponsored. So I'm just like spending money putting out a podcast episode that maybe a couple of thousand people will listen to. Um, and there was no big objective. Like I'm not doing it to get signed, to get published, to get monetization out of it. So that really wasn't a driver for me. So it's definitely not that, but I'm struggling. If I want to sort of get the big guns, it takes a lot of hustle. Um, a lot of speakers, a lot of podcast guests want budget. Uh, a lot of them won't speak to me. Not that I tried that hard, but because I'm not a big name, because I'm not, you know, exclusive to Spotify or whatever, I'm not that interesting to um, a celebrity podcast guest. So it takes a lot of schmoozing, it takes a lot of relationship building, uh, which in turn takes a lot of time. And I just don't have the time anymore. I just don't. So I've got three, I think three tentative podcasts booked in over the next month or so on topics that I am personally invested in and personally interested in. And I think that's a big drive for me as well. I will only want to speak to people that I'm really interested in. I can't just, you know, have an interview with, with whoever. And then I think I'm just going to reevaluate it all and work out what I want to do because I definitely have to do something. I get bored so quickly, you know, instead of watching TV or any of the series that all my friends are watching on Netflix, I spend my time watching YouTube tutorials or trying to develop or learn um, editing skills, for example. And of course I have a photography side hustle on the side as well. So I'm always trying to learn 
um, new skills on photography and of course photography is an incredibly expensive hobby and I've spent a lot of money on new lenses and again the software and all sorts of platforms that allow me to become a better photographer. Um, so I guess I've just hit a bit of a crossroads at the moment, uh, not really knowing what I'm going to get excited by, what I should be investing my time in. Um, which, although it doesn't sound that deep, it, it kind of is to me. It feels very personal because the podcast, like I said, has been my identity. It has been my thing. You know, I identify as a podcaster. When I meet people, it, it, it's part of my shtick. Uh, so who knows what the next few months will bring. I kind of want to sort it all out before the end of the year so that I can go into 2024 with a strategy or an idea as to the types of content that I want to make. So yeah, that's that's where we are. Sorry to bore you, but I thought I'd give you a little insight into where my head's at. So thanks for watching this video. If you made it this far, I salute you. Appreciate uh, you might have better things to be doing, but if you did enjoy it, please let me know. And um, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel because it is something that I'm potentially gonna be investing more time and energy in. And obviously feedback is a gift. Um, so anything you like, let me know. Anything you don't like, let me know. And of course, share it with friends and family. If that's your thing, appreciate not many people do share YouTube videos. Uh, but thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.